there's a, a fine layer of uh, a blanket of ash um, everywhere and I hear that um, the public are generally out on the streets trying to clean it up. Um, so there's there's a, a real communal effort to try and clean everything up and it's going to be a long, long, long road to recovery. Um, other things are affected. Um, food source with the plantations, um, farmers are trying to to, to make their plants um, live, uh, survive the, the volcanic eruption. Um, in, in terms of uh, what she described, she she said that uh, the the capital remained relatively unscathed. Uh, the, the tsunami didn't make it that far inland. Um, there's a lot of water damage. Um, so that the capital is not as badly affected as some of the reports that we've heard from, from the outer islands in Hapai, um, especially Mango, Fonoi and Nomuka, where there were reports of five, 10, um, even 15 meter high uh, tsunami waves. And, and those are the islands that I understand are being evacuated by the Tonga Navy as we speak. Fortunately, Digicel has been working around the clock to establish um, 2G service in Tonga. And that started to, to come online last night, late last night. Um, so we've managed to get uh, pictures on the ground, um, people posting on, on Facebook uh, what's happening um, back at home. Right now, the humanitarian aid is arriving and there are protocols for contactless um, drop-off of cargo. And this is happening at the wharf and also at the airport. Um, a commercial flights uh, carrying cargo were being delivered contactlessly and so was um, cargo coming arriving at the ports at the wharf. Um, that, that whole exchange was already contactless. So I, I believe, um, you know, we've had the last two years to practice that and it'll be no different for the humanitarian aid arriving.